Hey, 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 it's Caitlin Gray, and today I'm going to be taking you guys through all of the shenanigans and organizational processes I did to get organized for the new year and get my goals in check so I could live my best life for 2021. We are being productive, we are achieving our goals, but we are also keeping our life calm and cozy because, you know, that that is my goal for life, you know? That's what I'm about. But anyway, for today's video, I'm gonna be doing three bullet journal spreads. And as always, all the supplies for all the spreads will be linked below in case you wanna check them out. All right, so let's jump into the first spread, which is called Time to Reset. I originally got this spread idea from Raksha at Reflect with Raksha. I'll link her channel below. It's super, super amazing, especially if you're looking for someone who does journaling from a really mindful perspective. And she created this spread where it was essentially a little dashboard for all the things she needed to do to get her mind right and get organized for the new year. And I just thought that was such a good idea because I forget everything. So I need a spread where I can write down everything I need to do for the new year so that I don't inevitably forget it. So that is what this spread is going to function for for me. So for the spread, I kind of altered the categories that she made in order to better suit my life. So I made four categories of kind of big picture things I need to do for the new year. And this includes tidying, decluttering, administrative stuff, and reflecting. So more like the goal setting vision boarding of the situation. So what I did was for each of these four categories, I made a tracing paper square which is what I'm gonna write the things I have to do within each category in. And then underneath these tracing paper squares, I'm drawing these winter wiggles. <laughs> That's the official name now on the page so that you can kind of see them peeking through, through the uh, tracing paper, which is gonna give it a fun transparent moment. And I'm just going in with my Pit Artist brush pen to make these squiggles. And then I'm lettering well, actually, no, I'm actually not lettering. I'm doing cursive for once. I'm doing a cursive title that says time to reset, and I'm drawing some snowflakes with the same pen that I use for the title, which is my Tombow hard tip brush pen. Again, I'll link everything below, but for the most part, that's kind of the main two supplies you'll see in this video. So after I have the base down for my spread, I'm going in and I'm washi taping each of the four items in there. While I'm doing this, I thought I'd mention a couple things I actually wrote down since the spread is now filled in in the future. In the tidying box, I wrote that I need to tidy my closet because I'm always trying to get that girl finessed to her best self. <laughs> in the declutter section, I wrote I need to declutter my email subscriptions as well as my digital files because that is a hot mess. For reflection, I wrote I need to make my 2021 goals and my 2021 vision board, which will be in this video. And for admin, I wrote that I need to get my 2021 financial trackers set up since I use Excel, so I have to kind of make them myself. So a couple weeks later, I started to kind of check things off of that spread. I had finished my Unravel Your Year workbook, which was a free workbook that I wanted to do to kind of figure out my intentions and my mindset for the new year. And once I kind of finished that, I realized that I was feeling ready to make my vision board. So what I did to create my vision board was I went on Pinterest and I printed some images that aligned with the kind of big topics that I discovered in Unravel Your Year 2021. I'll link the free workbook below if you want to check it out. I found it really, really helpful, but you know, anything that kind of gets you in a reflective and introspective mood should do the trick. And then after I printed and cut out my photos, I also cut out two pieces of tracing paper that were the same size as my notebook pages. These pieces of tracing paper are going to kind of act like a little overlay window door situation for the spread. And it's kind of hard to explain, so I'm just gonna let you guys see what happens. But in order to make them, I first drew a line across the middle of both of the pages and wrote the vision. I'm first tracing it in pencil so I can make sure it's actually centered because <laughs> that'll seriously bug me if it's not. And um, I'm going in with my hard tip brush pen and I'm gonna letter that title. I'm also taping down the tracing paper with washi tape just to make sure that it doesn't move around when I'm doing things. Besides doing my lettered title with the hard tip brush pen, 
I also sketched in a couple of the flourish designs that I made in my 2021 bullet journal yearly setup. This is because when I made my yearly setup, I reserved these two pages before my January setup for my vision board. So although I'm creating this vision board in January, I wanted it to be a part of my yearly setup and not a part of my January monthly setup since I felt like it was more relevant to be in the yearly setup since it is relevant to the entire year. So that is why I'm kind of going for a design that's more similar to what my yearly setup was because this is technically a part of my yearly setup. So <laughs> there you go. In order to create my flourishes, I'm actually going in with my Uni Posca white paint pen. I think this is in the uh, 5M size and I'm going in and I'm drawing those flourishes, which I'm sure you guys know by now. If you don't, I'll link the video above, but I'm going in and drawing the flourishes. And I didn't realize when I made this, but these flourishes were actually really cool because when you put in the photos on your vision board and put this over top, the uh, really saturated colors of the photos allows the white flourishes to really pop and it gives it this really nice layered effect and it also kind of when the overlay is closed and you can't see the vision board as clearly, it creates a much more kind of calm and simplified look to the page or I guess what I'm trying to say is it looks a lot less visually overwhelming which is something that's really important to me in my journal. So I really like that with these kind of overlays you have the option to kind of reveal the vision board if you want to or kind of keep it closed and then it's not like a ton of photos in your face right away, if that makes sense. Anywho, I'm going in now and after I rearranged the uh, images in a pattern that I liked, I'm going in and I'm double-sided taping them all in. And then I'm going in and I'm taping in my little overlays. I want to call these Dutch doors, but I don't think that's an appropriate name, but they're kind of doors. They're like windows to the vision board, but anyway, taping those in on either side of my page with some white washi tape. And that's what's going to look like. It's going to kind of open up to the vision board, which I don't know. I just think this is really cool and I'm very pleased with the outcome. I didn't think this was what was going to happen, but I love it. It was such a nice little happy accident. The last thing I'm actually doing is I'm going in with the washi tape I use to tape down my tracing paper and I'm going in and adding it to my vision board. I'm doing this because I thought I'd give it a nice scrapbooky look, but it also is a good way to reuse the washi tape that I already ripped up because I needed to tape my tracing paper down. So I figured it was a win-win situation. Instead of going into all the images in my vision board now and explaining what they mean, I'm gonna actually include segments and screenshots of each part of my vision board when I go over my goals so you guys can see the full picture and how the vision board connects to my goal setting. So that will be in the next spread, which we're getting into right now, now, now. No, all right, I guess it's later then. <laughs> There we go, now we're into it. Okay, so after I set up my vision board, I felt like I really had a clear vision, <laughs> pun intended, of what kind of goals and intentions I wanted to set for the new year. I also wanna mention before I wrote these down in my journal, I kind of brainstormed them in a uh, note on my phone just to make sure that I finalized them before I wrote them down in pen. So let's jump in and uh, let me share with you my goals for 2020. All right, so starting off with the first and most straightforward goal, this one is experience nature. I really like being outside, but sometimes because life kind of happens, I forget to take time to uh, plan out hikes and walks and all that good stuff that I actually really enjoy and I found is really good for my mental health. My second goal is to grow the gray community. This one's also a bit more straightforward. I really want to be able to bring you guys more meaningful and high quality content this year. So that's something that I really want to focus on this year and uh, really just bring you guys like a really fun, cozy experience that is just a nice getaway for you. My third goal for 2021 is to unleash my creative genius. 
One thing I discovered when doing the Unravel Your Year workbook was that a lot of my fear and kind of things that held me back last year was because of my fear of other people's expectations and perfectionism. So I really just want to let that go this year and focus on just having fun and being creative. My fourth goal is to cultivate a calm and inspiring space. And this kind of has two meanings. The first is my physical space, so my actual house, making sure it's really clean and minimal and just really, really positive and calming. But also I wanna make sure my mental space is kind of reflecting my physical space. And I wanna make sure that I'm doing consistent forms of self-care and activities that really support my mental well-being. My fifth goal is to have fun in the kitchen. I don't talk about this too much, but I have been baking since I was literally born. So for me, the kitchen is a really fun space. And this year I really wanna improve my knife skills for chopping onions, not murdering people, relax, and also trying some new recipes. My sixth goal is to respect your limits. I am a major people pleaser, so I really wanna focus this year on figuring out what my boundaries are and really sticking to them. Finally, my seventh goal is to slow down and believe in yourself. I'm a very future focused person. I like to plan ahead. As you guys know, I have a bullet journal that kind of contributes to it, unfortunately, but this year I really just want to slow down, be present, appreciate all that I am doing and just validate that I'm doing enough and I am enough and I'm a really cool person and I should just like be really confident in myself because of all that I have and all that I am. So that's the seventh goal ending on a very meaningful and deep note, I think. <laughs> so after I wrote down my goals, I wanna show you guys this kind of bonus step that I'm doing in my journal, because I think sometimes we tell people our goals and then that's just it, but it's not really it, at least not for me. If I wanna achieve my goals, I need to write down things I wanna do to achieve the goals or the goal ain't happening. So right now I'm going into my project blog, which I set up in my yearly setup, along with uh, this goal spread actually. And I'm writing down specific projects, which I consider a project something that you need to do multiple tasks in order to finish it. And these projects are related to my goals. So for example, for the second goal, grow the gray community, I have some things on here like reinvest in a camera. I actually uh, film on my iPhone, which works really well, but I wanna bring you guys a bit of a higher quality visual experience. And also I wrote down stuff like learn photography basics and launch a website. Something I also did, which was really helpful, was for certain projects that I knew needed to happen a certain month, I wrote the date beside them so that when I reference my project log at the beginning of my monthly setups, I can migrate them into the appropriate month without having to think about it and not be in a situation where I forget I have to do, you know, my fall wardrobe audit in September and it just doesn't happen because I forgot to write it down. So yeah, I just wanted to show you guys that extra step so you could kind of get an idea of how I take the goal and bring it into a more actionable step in my journal. So that is my goal setting and vision boarding and just getting organized for the new year so we can set ourselves up for success video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this video inspiring, helpful, or at least mildly entertaining. And until next time, I hope you all are having a great new year and I wish you the best of luck with your goal setting. I'll make sure to link some videos that I found really helpful in the description below about goal setting in case you want to do some more research. And besides that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye everyone!